Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Deborah, and this is video number 500. Yay! Cheers and whatever from the crowd. <laughs> All right, let's get going. As promised, here's my craft room. Now I've done one uh, a video of my craft room a few times, and this is the latest one. So it is now May 2021. And I have done a recent quick rearrange. I didn't rearrange very much, but I've opened it up a lot more, I think. Start with the tile on the floor. That hasn't changed. I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. It goes out into the laundry and into the other little sort of box room that we've got. And just to change it is just too expensive. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I did end up getting a rug just to make it feel a little bit more cozy particularly for my husband he comes to sit down here and spend time and he thought that it was just you know not quite cozy enough for him so we ended up getting this lovely rug and I must say it has worked so if I start at the beginning this is the front door or the entry door here all the doors in my house are painted this color and the walls are a very very pale gray they probably look white to you and that is my art wall, which I have shown you recently. So it just goes along there. And from time to time, I switch it up. I added the little mirrors. They were something that my mother-in-law had. And so when she passed last year, I decided that I would keep the little mirrors that she had on her wall. Because I thought that they were really cute and we didn't want to get rid of everything of hers, you know. It's very hard to, um, you know, worry about that when someone passes about what you're going to keep because now I have so much stuff because I've got a lot of her stuff and plus I've got a lot of my mum's still. So that is the door to under the house. So that's why I can't really keep anything on there. I do have this little shelf. Again, that was made by my father-in-law, my husband's father, whom I never met. He passed away long before, or a few years before I met my now husband. And we've been married 30, uh, must be 32, coming up 32 years this year. But I've just kept it there because he's going to do something with it. So it just sits there. It's no trouble. Beside that, I've got my low Ikea Alex drawers. These are the ones that are on wheels. So they're quite wide and they're much lower than the others. And then I've got my ephemera. So this is all the ephemera that I've shown you before in these plastic containers that come from Bunnings. And also now I have added the little clip lock things in here because they fit perfectly on their sides into those big drawers and one little set of little drawers. I do have my labels still. I've had these for quite a while but because I've rearranged my room and, and what's in the drawers some of them actually don't have labels anymore but we'll just take a quick look through and you can see for yourself what's in there. The top one is uh, cellophane and by that I mean these are all my cellophane bags or at least some of them. I've recently moved a lot of them out. It was just getting too difficult to get them out because I use these to pack everything in for my Etsy orders. And then underneath there I have just all these art sort of tools, my gel press and all of that sort of stuff. And the next drawer has flowers so it's all flowers and pre-made stuff. A lot of this is pretty old. My flowers that I just bought the other day are in here now. Then washi tape. So not terribly full this drawer. And one thing I don't like about the Alex drawers is that you can't get to the back of them. So I use these shallow containers. If I wanted to, I can push these further in, put others in front of them here in this space. And you can see I've got a whole space there too and then pull these ones, lift the front ones out and pull these ones out. And I do do that with a number of the drawers simply because it annoys me that you can't pull them all the way out. In the next one are art tools. So that's wire and pens and different things I use when I'm making my mixed media. And again, that's the same thing. You'll see, I can, if I wanna to get to this back one, I can just move that one and then pull this one out and hence I'm using the storage at the back and these little containers I just got from the cheap shop they had them there one day and he had a whole lot of them and I think I bought the lot I've got like probably 80 of them I just worry because when you go to like what I call the cheap shop or the two dollar shop 
you find that they'll have something and then they never get it again. These are more art tools and things and this is a little bit disorganized at the moment because I have been moving things around. So this top drawer are my die, it says die cuts but they're actually all my dies and embossing folders and things. In the next one are my paints and I've got a lot of uh, Atelier paints and also they're the expensive ones, um, acrylic paints they are. These are the cheap um, Joe Sonia's or no Chroma Curl actually. I have, I oh know I don't think I have any Joe Sonia's anymore. Um, so they're just a cheap, you know, artist paint, just a kid's paint, really good. And then of course my Diane Reevely paints in here. And in the next one I've got lots of oxides and spray inks and things like that. And I've also got a few watercolours somehow managed to make their way into there. There's all my oxides. Um, and then I've got a few other little bits and bobs at the back. I've got some distress inks over here in that right hand side my paper artsy so that's all those sorts of things in there the next drawer is what I call my eyelet drawer which is it's also got a cutter in there but it's basically my uh, crocodile which my friend gifted me recently which was very nice of her she said she had a spare one so she gave me one and uh, my big bite now I do use the crocodile it comes in surprisingly handy if I don't want to get the big bite out and the next one is called tools but it's actually you know tools and a bit of a mishmash of things and again needs a bit of a tidy up in there the bottom one is labeled muslin but it's actually empty because i've moved my muslin to a different spot don't look at the dirty floor this <laughs> is the uh, couch so they're my quilts i've got a couple of quilts on there and cushions and the Left hand side is my side and the right hand side is my husband's when he comes down to visit with me. This is just an old couch that I have down here. And above that I have some shelving. So a couple of years ago my builder, I got him to come in and um, do the room which was painted in a horrible dark blue which you can probably go back and look at. And uh, between each of the bricks it was just hideous because each of the uh, low brick, this is an old carport that they filled in somebody filled in before we bought the house and the bottom part of the brick which was well behind the couch things kept falling down there it was so dirty so between each of the columns of brick he couldn't take that out and cover it completely um, because of uh, white ants you know termites we had to be careful not to cover the ant caps and things you can still see the little ant caps sitting on top of the pillars there because this was an outside structure but I got him to fill those in and put a little shelf above each of the sections. So I keep a lot of my stuff up there now. So that's quite a, a good thing. All my little trinkets and things that I want to display. And then I've got a, another set of, oh, I've got a little coffee table there. That's a really old one that my grandmother owned. It's got a flip top lid. My dad had it then. And then when he passed a couple of years ago, it came to me and my mum's old tennis racket so I've got a few sentimental things down there and a little art piece I've done and then one of the big Antonis art pieces that I've done here and uh, not much the only problem with my room is not much wall space yeah because it's got lots of windows so I've sacrificed on the wall space but the windows are important because I'm a person who has to have light so again a few art things on top of this set and this is the same as the other drawers I just showed you. You can see I've got some labels on the outside, but my husband and I put it together. So we took the, didn't put the wheels on one, we put it together. We um, actually have big bracing on the back joining the two pieces together, so it's super safe. I wouldn't recommend just sitting one on there, there it'd be too dangerous. But we put a big panel of wood on the back so that we could join them safely and screwed it and glued it all on. So that's the drawers. And in these ones, I have a lot of my stuff for sewing. So quilt rulers, threads. I don't think you want to see in a lot of these, do you? I also keep my stamping, um, sorry, my envelope punch boards in here and a few other sorts of tools. And then in this one are, you know, threads and things like that. Again, I bought these at the cheap shop, these blue ones. And then I have them at the back and I can, you know, just lift these out and then pull the others at the back when I need them. And the next one are sewing tools. So I do a fair bit of sewing. 
so I have a lot of sewing tools more sewing tools so this is where I keep my wax thread and needles in here as well as my overlocker thread scissors and rotary cutters and all that sort of stuff you can see in there this is my uh, Tim Holtz drawer not all I've got but this is the bigger things that I haven't put into an actual tub at the moment so lots of um, tissue paper things in there because they're quite long and they don't fit into the tub so that's why they're in here and lots of other trinkets and things and that's not Tim Holtz that's just something I've made but bottles and things like that as I said I haven't I haven't cleaned up for you and down here this is called new but it's actually not new it used to be where I threw my new stuff when I came in that's an instruction for class there but I've got a few things in there that does need a clean out as well so I'll just pop that back in this one is my file folder drawer so this is where I keep all my file folders because I use a lot of them they're just the manila folders got a whole pile of them there and then these are the beautiful ones that were gifted to me haven't used a lot of them yet but I have started something with them which is why one of them's chopped up and then the next two are just um, beads embroidery hoops and down the very bottom I got all my buttons now this cupboard in the corner it's been in most of the videos now it's the old kitchen cupboard when we replaced our kitchen so it used to house the microwave and the oven and when we replaced our kitchen I repurposed a lot of it down here I thought that that was a cheap way to do my craft room it fits perfectly in this corner and it holds heaps of stuff so I've opened it up so you can see I've got lots of books and things up there so there's a double layer of books and things like that the middle shelf I've got um, the water bottles not for drinking it's for my iron <laughs> actually and um, my one of my quilt rulers that doesn't fit in the drawer an old pizza box a few other books and things that I have and a bit of stuffing for um, stuffing cushions and things and I've got a box of box of boxes at the back which I bought ages ago and I'm you know I use them from time to time and I have a number of the green mats because when I had the shop I had a lot of mats for everyone and I haven't thrown them out I've just kept them they sit there and that's fine lots of other books and bits and bobs there in the drawer there's two big drawers these were the old pot drawers one is full of books and the other is uh, got linens and quilt stuff and ribbons and things in them and then because display stuff is so important I use the side of it for one of the watercolor paintings it's not mine it's a professional one and also for some of my shoe lasts because I like the old vintage shoe lasts so they're the original handles and everything very very handy and then I'll step back so you can see this is one of the windows the window at the front that you would have um, seen on yesterday's video looking in now we're looking out toward the front of the house and this is the bench so it's the old kitchen bench I got the builder because it had a rough edge when he did the craft room for me he put an edge of wood on it so it's nice and smooth and because it was an L shape and when he took it off obviously when we pulled it apart it had a really rough edge on it the original uh, drawers they match the cupboard and they're from the old kitchen and then this was a cupboard but I haven't put the drawers or the doors back onto that and underneath there are some fabrics and things quilting quilting batting and things and then they're all my new containers I took you through that recently and then some old pictures or not old but pictures and things down there my ironing pad as well as some display pieces on the little shelf so between each of the columns of brick he put little shelves in for me so even this tiny one and the power points were down low so I got him to move those up I also increased the power points I have two double power points at three spots in the in the room now a sign my daughter gave me for um, Mother's Day or Christmas or something my ironing pad my die cut cutter there are my quilt rulers the long ones that don't fit in the drawer at the back there picture of my mum with her siblings a big cutting mat because this is where I do my cutting for my quilting my cutter for craft then I've recently put this set of drawers in it holds the extra piece um, the extra bags the cellophane bags 
it just wasn't neat enough I didn't um, I got sick of trying to scrabble through the drawers that big drawer trying to find them even though I had them all labeled by size I find that this is much easier I already had this I just you know you can see the old labels on it I haven't bothered to change that over yet I should do that but you know there's always something else to do and then on top of that I keep my scoreboard and down here between the drawers and the cupboard I have an old suitcase it has um, fabric in it and this is an original suitcase that belonged to my mum and dad and uh, about a year before dad passed away I asked him could I have it and I used to use it when I went to markets as a display piece to put you know cushions and things in now I just use it to store my own fabrics in and this is one of the Razcog carts you can see it's empty a few things in the top that I need to move and put elsewhere because my husband's going to have this eventually in his um, room in the he has the little room which is on this same level this is a, a three level house and this is the bottom level and um, if you go through the laundry he then has a room where he's got all his little you know, bits and bobs and stuff that he mucks around with and eventually he's told me that he wanted that at the moment it just sits here if I need to get into the drawers I wheel it out it's really no issue until he wants it so um, oh, the only thing I didn't show you was this is all my uh, quilting and fabric supplies and I did KonMari it probably three years ago now but it's still you know it's still okay I'm still managing to get it there this is my book where I keep a list and notations of all the different quilts I've made and the designs that I've done and you know who I've made them for as well and when I remembered I started keeping the little tickets that came off them so that just sits in the drawer here and then in the next one uh, fabric I won't pull them out but they're um, they pull out fine they're just big wads of fabric and different things oh and if you're wondering what this is this is my next project for Bella Papery sitting there looking at me waiting for me to pick it up and actually do it which I must do this weekend and then moving around the room we have another window that's looking out into the carport where my husband parks his car and then three of the uh, tall Alex drawers and one of the small ones so this is a recent change that I made I actually bought the Alex drawer the little one which was over further on the right hand side it was further up the room and I bought it over here and that is where I plug my phone and my iPad in when I need power and again there's another little shelf there with a clock and no the clock's not on the right time it needs a new battery and of course the air conditioning and a few other display pieces that are on there so these Alex drawers in the bottom two on the left here I keep my tools and my power tools my power tools are things like my um, heat gun and uh, um, hot wax gun and things like that and my tools are all the different little tools like I've got screwdriver and of course my crow uh, cutting knife and various other bits and bobs safety glasses so I have my own little tools in here my own um, my own pull out ruler because my husband would otherwise use it and take it so that's mine it's green of course and then the ones with the red dots these are all my Etsy um, stuff I sell on Etsy so you can see I've got tickets and lots of different things that I sell on Etsy here so all of these and then all of these as well this is basically my Etsy shop and everything's labeled with a little red sticker that tells me where the number starts from because I number everything on Etsy um, up the top here I have an empty drawer I haven't put anything in it yet then I've got some punches and things here the next one are all my labels so that's like an office label supply area this is another empty one I'm getting good at having empty ones there's a few extra bits and bobs in there here are different things I've got some more file folders plus lap books and things that I've done down the bottom I've just got some things that I've chucked in there just some old papers and things that I haven't really put anywhere yet and I've got cotton reels and stick pins in the bottom and then also uh, I think I've got papers in that bottom one on the top of the thing I've got my laces and 
my um, sari silk and also in this one I've got all of my seam binding that's not all the laces but it is some of them and different sentimental things in there and then the little Ikea um, Alex draw is all of my stationery supplies printer paper and things like that and then beside there I've got a basket of linen that I've washed and I need to iron it up and then uh, a lot of that will go on Etsy and then here is my sewing machine so this is my good sewing machine there's a little stool under there and yes I need to recover it and then I've walked around the other side now so if we move along you can see I've got another big window and the white panel I used to craft on that that's what you've seen in a lot of my videos we ended up putting it there because the glare was coming in so what I did in here was I moved the desk so I had this desk that I now film on I had it around here I used to have the big table this big table used to come out from the wall and I moved it under this window the reason was that I was feeling extremely cramped and the desks that I now film on had um, a high top on it so I've and it used to be full of stuff and it was a complete mess so I've taken that out of the room I've put the things that are on it papers and lots of uh, research stuff because I do my family tree so most of it was that and I moved this desk here so now I can have a little cutting board next to me so I've got that uh, cutting mat next to me when I need to cut something and I've got this surface which I try and keep clean except for my computer so that's my Mac that I uh, work on and then around here on the desk I've got my sewing machine which is at the back I'm looking to get some sort of platform to sit that on so I can easily just pull that forward that's my old one that's my new one at the back there so I've got some um, hand sanitizer and cotton things in that little bowl there and then if I scoot around here that green basket is full of my packaging supplies for my Etsy orders and then I've got um, this is a um, HP PC this time and another chair my husband sits on that chair and works at that PC occasionally he does have his own upstairs we are a computer family we both worked in IT he still works in IT and I was in IT for you know 25 years so I've got plenty of computers around here different purposes um, and then you can see my TCA sign which is for the craft attic that I did when I had the shop and then under the table I have a bin and I also have my postage supplies now that used to be under my table and at my feet it's now on the side here so this is now where I pack my Etsy orders and I'm finding that so much better than having it where I was doing the craft it was just overwhelming me and I was getting really annoyed at the amount of stuff that was around my feet and that's on wheels so it just rolls in and out really easily and then around here I'll just um, show you so I've got a uh, it's actually a laundry basket but I use it to put all my long skinny things in you can see down there so I've got a number of things like paper and stuff from Ikea and old maps and things that I use or that I have for my family tree and they're all in there and then up on the table behind the computer this is my overlocker if I want to use my overlocker I can just lift it out it's not heavy and I would then use it on this table here with my sewing machine the other thing that you might have noticed is I do not have any curtains on these three windows I don't feel I need to I'm not here in the night I don't craft at night my eyes are not good enough anymore and therefore I don't need to have them shut during the night and this is really private I've got the electric gate out the front and if anybody comes in that little gate that I walked it through in yesterday's video I hear them it has a certain noise and we always know if the little gate gets open and the big gate is electric so it can't be open unless you have the um, the key and push the button so it rolls open so I feel very safe in here I do have uh, security screens on the windows as well as you can see and I find that I'm you know it's perfectly good to sit in here and craft without having any curtains and it just lets all that light in as I said I'm a person who needs a lot of light and I find that that's great even today which is actually very overcast 
it's still fairly bright in here I do not have the lights on if I need to turn the lights on I have banks of lights on the ceiling these are all um, what pot lights as they're known in America or down lights that we call them here in Australia and they turn on so I've got I'll just start from the back I get two over the back and then the next two sorry this is the next two so that's the the next two and then I've got two more or three more above the desk and then the final one is I've got two more here and you can probably see how much brighter it is in here now and you can see why I said that it's an overcast dull day today so it's super super bright with all these lights on the um, the builder was a bit sort of suspicious he was like why do you need so many lights and I used to have one light in the center of the room and it was so dark in here particularly on days like today and at night this is just like you know lit up it's just so bright which I love if I need to come down and look for something I can do that and uh, otherwise I don't really come down here much at night but I think that they're great I don't use them when I'm filming normally because they do cast shadows which annoys me but if I need to I can and now I'll just turn them off and you'll see that the room will actually become darker from my perspective and then if I move back to where I was before I showed the lights this is my Razcog cart this is the only one I use now I've consolidated everything into here I moved the paints into the drawers and it is on wheels of course so I roll this out and I put it beside my desk when I'm going to craft and I find that that works fine so when I finished for the day because I'm in here most days unless I'm going out somewhere that is where the race cog cart lives when it's not there or if I need to get things and it's there I just move it out of the way now this here is a bank of uh, shelving as you can see this was originally the old cupboard that was in here it had sliding glass doors which I'm not a fan of and so I took them off fairly quickly when they uh, when I, we got here and if you look back at other videos and I will put them in the link below I will try very hard to remember to do that then you will see that it is vastly different I got the builder um, I think last year he came and he fixed it up for me and what I had done was on the left hand side those shelves there he made more shelving for me it already had the ability to put them in these are those shelves that you can adjust and I got him to make another five or six shelves because there was only a couple in there and it was just silly and uh, that way I could sort everything out so in that I have some things my dad's old uh, bag up the top there and some other things and then I've got some journals with uh, containers behind them so these are the containers the long skinny ones and I keep a lot of stuff in there my stencils and all those sorts of things and because I've run out of room for my journals I'm now putting them in front of that it works fine if I need to get something I just lift the journal out and on this one are art supplies and other papers and things and these are the wider version of the uh, ones above just get them from you know big W here they're quite good actually and below that I have some uh, tubs and also my uh, spare tapes <laughs> tape roll sticky tape and then I've got wooden stamps and things in there and then I've got some more other bits and bobs art journals and things like that in the bottom one this next section with all the shelves has been purpose-built it used to have it used to be sectioned off and um, a couple of years ago a year and a half ago I took all that out and put wire shelving in there and I just found that that didn't work I was really over it and so I got my builder in and I asked him could he do some long shelving for me they're all secure they've got extra um, supports at the back so that nothing you know they won't sag over time hopefully they're also fixed in and how he put them in was to my measurement so I measured two of my containers high plus I needed some room to get them in and out and so we decided on a on a profile of how high each shelf would be and he put eight shelves in there for me so I also have these uh, single tubs that go in there as well as you can see and uh, all of the stuff that I keep in there 
and they're not quite long enough for four of the tubs across unfortunately that space wasn't long enough but at the end of the day I just make it work and it is so much better than what it used to be again probably needs a bit of a tidy up uh, up the uh, there you can see the the cloth things there are all the bags with my junk journals in them these ones on the left of that don't have bags yet I'll have to make some more and then down the bottom I've got more tubs and also I keep my shoes in here that is an old drawer from an entertainment unit and I keep my shoes there I also have on the bottom some uh, Spanish books because I speak Spanish I learned Spanish for many years and I still speak Spanish once a week with a friend of mine we get on Skype and chat in Spanish just a uh, local she's a local friend in Brisbane but since pandemic for the last year or so we've just been doing it via Skype and then the blue folder and the tub above they are my family tree uh, books and family tree papers in the next section just starting from the top I have some bags and things up the top and then you know different handbags and other bits and bobs and then the Ikea drawers I keep managing to get rid of these but I did repurpose um, redo them again I've had them for years and years and my husband loves them but I did actually cover them and redo them a few years ago and he's never forgiven me he liked the original lot what I had the builder do was purpose build those shelves um, in them they're a tiny little bit they're pretty good they're a tiny little bit wide the shelf but it was an existing piece of the interior fit out and then we just decided we'd put two shelves in there that perfectly fit those I used to have them on top of one another in the old method and the problem was every time I opened something on the top the bottom one would fall out as well and that was a bit frightening a few times so I got him to purpose build what I needed in the um, in terms of the shelf and now they, they don't fall out they stay where they are and I actually use them a lot more because of that they're all labeled that was part of the thing that I did at the time and then down the bottom I have uh, photos and slides in that next thing so they're all my own personal photos that are not yet in photo albums and all of my photo albums are actually upstairs but um, all my scrapbooks because I used to do a lot of scrapbooking so I've got you know probably 20 full scrapbooking albums but these are just the loose photos and my mum's photos and things I've been going through and and uh, you know go, going to uh, share a lot more with my sisters give them a lot I think they're coming over in a couple of weeks to do that in the final thing on the bottom on the ground this is one of the best tubs I have ever used I've got to say I'll just pull it out so you can see it houses all my family history file inf um, information so all my certificates and things you can see on the right I will point this out this mess on the right is from the track I recently took the track up and it's still coming up it keeps coming back we clean it and then it comes back so just ignore that but this is all my family history information I file everything numerically so every document gets a number and this is the one you know the best tub ever that you could buy I just love these tubs I only have the one my husband has one as well they are pretty pricey and I'll put a link to them below because um, if you want a tub particularly one for storing files then this is the one you can store the files either way I've got them stored this way but you can get the shorter hanging files and store them the other way and that is from the really useful box company now here in Australia you can't get all the colors a lot of people use them for their family history storage and you can color code them but we can't get all the colors here I just got that from Officeworks it was a lot more expensive than a normal plastic tub but they're absolutely brilliant and then in the final column I have um, up the top I have some bubble wrap getting a bit low on that actually and um, my novels my books they are the only novels I own they're special ones that I read you know every few years I'll get them down and read them again and uh, one is a complete set of pole duck series from Winston Graham one of my favorite actually probably my favorite one and the others are Jane Austen novels and that's all I have I used to have a lot of books I got rid of them many years ago 
but these ones I just couldn't get rid of so I kept them I should I say I have gotten rid of them in the past and I re-bought them a few years ago <laughs> because I wanted to read particularly the pole dark ones again and then below that I have three tubs so this shelf these are existing as well some of these shelves but I got as I said the builder made me some more that fit into the space and so I can position them wherever I want so I've got three up there that you know I don't get those um, tubs down all the time the ones with the pink tabs they are actually the bigger ones that will fit the 12 by 12 papers in them so I tend to get the top one down not so much the other two but it's pretty good you know two two's better but I could fit three in there and below that that is sort of like my personal stuff so I keep my bike helmet in there and you know my bike helmet has a hat on it also my fluoro vest that I wear when I'm out cycling there's a hair clip a mask of course you know we've got a few masks in there um, water bottle carrier umbrella things like that little bag of stuff that I throw in my handbag occasionally and then below that I have got my tubs my spotlight tubs with all the little folders in them and also some paper storage that's 12 by 12 paper storage there and then I've got another couple of tubs below that and then down the bottom I've got a lot of envelopes and things that's all family tree stuff so all of that stuff or most of that stuff came off the um, the credenza from the desk and that's where I've put it for now I haven't even gone through it actually because I've only done this a couple of weeks ago and then we're back around to the door the entry door for the craft room the other thing is that I do have 500 videos now and as a reminder if you want to find something that I've done I have a video index a YouTube video index and it's on my website which is stringandscissors.com.au now there are links in every video I do below in the description I have links and there is a link to this particular site as well and if you want to find a video that I've done then you need to just select a category from here I've recently updated it actually just recently because I knew I was coming up to 500 videos and so if you come down you'll be able to find whatever you're looking for I've categorized them by uh, groupings hopefully that uh, makes sense so if you're looking for something on scrapbooking paper and if you click that it will then load up all of the videos that I've done on scrapbooking paper and so these are just the titles so if you want to know how to use large scrapbooking papers in junk journals you can click on that link and it will actually play it here in the window and then also oh I've moved to another one I was going to say also you can move to a category so this is in two categories this particular one it's uh, cling foam stamps and you can move to the category which is stamps or Tim Holtz and you can also move back and forth so if I click on Tim Holtz it will actually bring up all of the Tim Holtz videos and yes there are quite a few there's two pages but if you click on that so this is one of the videos wall, worn wallpaper ideas it'll bring up that's a fairly recent one that I've done you can watch it on YouTube or you can just watch it here in this window and you can go to the previous one so if you go to the previous video it will bring up the next video that's in the series so you can kind of scroll back and forth between these different videos how to make my Alice pop up so that's in a category called pop up so if we go to pop up you'll see I've got the Alice pop up creating accordions and pop ups and this one which is making a pop up in a journal which um, so you can see that you can just move around within here and if you want to go back you can go here to the YouTube video index again and then you can select something else so I think I've got a couple more I've got to stick into craft room tours so I've got 2018 and 2019 so you can have a look at what it looked like when I first came here see the horrible blue navy blue walls it was so dark and horrible and also this is in the days when I first started in fact August 2018 was when I started my YouTube channel so this is one of the videos I did fairly early on and I didn't have a, um, a picture or anything you know a proper header or anything on the video at that time but you can see that it's um, it's changed a lot and 
as I said, then you can go back and forth. If you want to go back to craft room tours, this is the update. I'm pretty sure I did one last year, so I'll have to uh, do one. And you can see again, it is uh, quite different. At that point, I have uh, done the, the work that I had done. I can see that there and I've got things in different positions. So that is there for you if you want to find anything that I've done because I think that um, you know it's good to actually look through them and, and they're, they're categorized and I've just recently done that. So there's probably about 490 odd in there. I can't remember how many are actually in there and I can actually uh, then change up the categories you know if I need to. Unfortunately I can't put the image up here. I have been trying to do that but can't work out how to do that but I've done this much so at least you can go through if you want to have a look at what I've done and you can find a video easily rather than trying to find it on YouTube. I found that you know even for myself to try and find things on YouTube is quite difficult whereas using this method I can just find things that I want to find really quite easily. So they're all on there if you'd like to um, have a look at that at any time and if you forget it's stringandscissors.com.au but all of the links are in the description below including my Instagram, uh, my Facebook page, all of that information is in there. Now I do have a shop on here as well but I don't actually sell anything on here currently. I sell everything on Etsy. And while I'm here I just thought I may as well show you my Etsy shop. Everything that I have is branded the same. It's all string and scissors and it has the same branding on the whole lot. So this is my Etsy shop that you can see here and that's just string and scissors on Etsy and then I also have an Instagram and I put a lot of the you know most of what I put on Instagram is what I've made on YouTube so I guess that's another quick way to find out what I've been up to because everything if you've watched YouTube you're probably recognizing all of this I find that that's quite handy too and then I do have a, a link tree as well so if I go to link tree it'll bring up where you can you know find me so string along is my Facebook group Etsy um, that is my shop but um, you know on that website I just showed you but I don't actually have anything in it at the moment uh, you can follow the page on Facebook and this here links to my YouTube channel so if you click on that you'll go to my YouTube channel so this is my YouTube channel that's what you see when you look at my YouTube channel and you can see that um, this is just one of my recent ones but below if you go to show more then you scroll down you'll see how you can find me on social media so this is Etsy which we just looked at that is the website and the YouTube index also Instagram if you want to get in touch you can do so via email or any of these methods Etsy and Instagram and um, Facebook have information on how you can um, message me but if you want to send me an email deborah at stringandscissors.com.au or if you want to send me any snail mail there my PO box is below in every video that I do and don't forget that if you want to join my happy mail list you need to get in touch with me and let you let me know your address. The first happy mail has been sent out already and it's just a matter now of waiting I'll be sending one out once a month. So that's it for today. Fairly full video for number 500 and thank you very much for supporting me. I truly do appreciate it and my subscribers are growing. I now have uh, 3,330 odd subbies as of today and I also am getting a lot more views on my video. So even if you're not subscribed then I do have lots of um, people who don't subscribe and that's fine and they view my videos and it's just lovely that the craft community support people like me especially you know I'm just a, an ordinary person I live in an ordinary house and I'm doing what I love and sharing it with you that's all and I will catch you next week this is Deborah cheers <music>